Hello everybody, welcome back to the Praetorian. I'm Roger Hansen, and today I will be doing yet another reading. This will be on Horace Mann. This comes from notes that I took on May the 6th, 2009. It's about Horace Mann, who was born May the 14th, 1976. Between he he lived between 1796 or May the 4th, 1796. He lived between May or 1796, 05 to 04. I believe that would be 1905 or 1904. He lived in Franklin, Massachusetts, or he was born in Franklin, Massachusetts. And he died August the 2nd, 1859, at the age of 63, in Yellow Springs, Ohio. His occupation, he was a college president, educator, and politician. His spouse was Mary Peabody Mann, and I mentioned her in my uh, one of my last uh, videos. His children was Horace Jr., George Combe, Benjamin Pickman, and his parents were Thomas Mann, Rebecca Stanley Mann. Okay, now, Horace Mann, May 14th, or May 4th, 1796 to August 2nd, 1859, was an American education reformer and an abolitionist. He was also a member of the U.S. House of Representatives and a Republican. He was a brother-in-law to Arthur Nathaniel Hawthorne, since their wives were sisters. Education and Early Career Horace Mann was born on May 4, 1796, in Franklin, Massachusetts. His childhood and youth were passed in poverty, and his health was impaired early by hard manual labor. His only means for gratifying his eager desire for books was the small library founded in his native town by Benjamin Franklin and consisting principally of histories and treatises on uh, theology. He enrolled at Brown University at the age of 20 and graduated after three years as valedictorian of his class in 1819. He then studied law for a short time at Ren Rentham, Rentham Brown University study <clears throat> Brown University studied during 1821 to 1823 at Litchfield Law School, the famous law school conducted by Judge Tapping Reeve in Lynchfield, Connecticut, and in 1823 was admitted to the Norfolk, Massachusetts Bar. In 1830, Mann married Charlotte Messer, though she died only two years later on August 1, 1832. His grief over her death never fully subsided. For 14 years, first at Dedham, Massachusetts, and after 1833 at Boston, he devoted himself with great success to his profession. While in Dedham, home of the nation's first free tax support public school, he served on the school committee. Meanwhile, he served in the Massachusetts House of Representatives from 1827 to 1833 and in the Massachusetts Senate from 1833 to 1837. Sorry, it's 1827 to 1833 that he was a representative. And he was part of the Senate from 1833 to 1837. For the last two years as Senate President, for the last two years as Senate President, it was not until he was appointed Secretary in 1837 of the newly created Board of Education of Massachusetts 
that he began the work which was soon to place him in the foremost rank of American educationists. He held this position and worked with a remarkable intensity, holding teachers' conventions, delivering numerous lectures and addresses, carrying on an extensive correspondence, and introducing numerous reforms. <clears throat> he planned and inaugurated the Massachusetts Normal School System in Lexington and Bridgewater, founded and, and edited the Common School Journal in 1838 and began preparing a series of annual reports which had a wide correct circulation and are still considered as being among the best expositions, if indeed they are not the very best ones of the practical benefits of a common school education, both to the individual and to the state. And that's from Hensdale. Man's reforms included the establishment of a single school system throughout the state instead of separate local school districts. He urged separate classrooms for students at different levels of learning and discouraged learning by rote and flogging as punishment. Most importantly, he worked effectively for more and better equipped schoolhouses, longer school years until 16 years old, higher pay for teachers, and a wider curriculum. In 1852, he supported Governor Edward Everett in the decision to adopt the Prussian education system in Massachusetts. Shortly after Everett and Mann collaborated to adopt the Prussian system, the gover governor of New York set up the same method in 12 different new New York schools on a trial basis. The practical result of man's work was a revolution in the approach used in the common school systems of Massachusetts, which in turn influenced the direction other states you know, influenced the direction of other states. And carrying out his work hold on, I gotta No. In carrying out his work, man met with bitter opposition was met by bitter opposition by some Boston schoolmasters who strongly disapproved of his innovate, innovative pedagogical ideas and by various religious sectarians he, who contended against the exclusion of all sectarian instruction from the school. He is often considered the father of American public education. All right. Leadership of Antioch College and last years. Original degorial de type of Republican man, Mass, from Matthew Brady studio in 1949 from 1853 until his death in 1859 he was president of the newly established Antioch College at Yellow Springs Ohio where he taught political economy intellectual and moral philosophy and natural theology the college received insufficient finance support due to sectarian infight in infighting he himself was charged with non-adherence to sectarianism because previously a Calvinist by upbringing, he joined the Unitarian Church. The college was founded by the Christian Connexion, who later withdrew their funding, but he earned the love of his students and by his many addresses exerted a beneficial influence upon education in the Midwest. Horace Mann also employed the first female faculty member to be paid 
on an equal basis with her male colleagues, Rebecca Pinnell. His commencement message to the class of 1859 to be ashamed to die until you have won some victory for humanity is repeated to the graduating class at each commencement. He is buried in the North Burial Ground in Providence, Rhode Island, next to his first wife, Charlotte Messer Mann, daughter of Asa Messer, president of Brown College in Providence, Rhode Island. Legacy Antioch College continues to operate in accordance with the egalitarian and humanitarian values of Horace Mann. A monument including his statue stands in lands belonging to the college in Yellow Springs, Ohio, with his quote and college motto, Be ashamed to die until you have won some victory for humanity. There are a number of schools in the U.S. named for man, <clears throat> including ones in Lakewood, Ohio, Indiana, Pennsylvania, Arkansas, Washington, D.C., Boston, Massachusetts, Bakersfield, California, San Jose, California, Charleston, West Virginia, Marston Mills, Massachusetts, Salem, Massachusetts, Wichita, Kansas, Redmond, Washington, Fargo, North Dakota, St. Louis, Missouri, Chicago, Illinois, Mount Vernon, Illinois, Bingham, New York, North Bergen, New Jersey, Colorado Springs, Colorado, Ottawa, Iowa, and the Horace Mann School of Riverdale, New York, Horace Mann High School, North Fond, Dulac, Wisconsin, and a now closed school in Gary, Indiana. The University of Northern Colorado named the gates to their campus in his dedication, a gift of the class of 1910. Further reading Man Horse, The Life and Works of Horace Mann, with introduction by his second wife, Mary Peabody Mann. Hinsdale, Burke A. Horace Mann in the Common School Revival in the United States, New York, 1898, in the Great Educators Series. Hubble, George A., Life of Horace Mann, Educator, Patriot, and Reformer, Philadelphia, 1910. Lang O. H. Horace Mann, His Life and Work, New York, 1893. Larson, Robert W. Boulder, Colorado Associated University Press, 1989. Shaping Educational Change, The First Century of the University of Northern Colorado at Greeley. ISBN 0 or 0 87 0 81 172 X. Mercellary Jonathan Horace Mann, A Biography, New York, 1972. Winship Albert E. Horace Mann, The Educator, Boston, 1896. Alright, there are a lot of notes and external links but I am going to leave it there and I hope that you guys did enjoy the video if you did please feel free to like share make comments we love feedback give us a thumbs up um, and thanks for listening I um, am doing a series of videos on the transcendentalists of the 1800s. That's why I'm making quite a few videos on early educators in the 1800s. If you guys are interested in learning about transcendentalism, please feel free to uh, 